Welcome back to Harbor Unbox. Today we're wrapping up my six core 12 thread CPU testing with the Ryzen 5 5600X. We'll be adding it to the Core i5 10400F and Ryzen 5 3600 data collected in the previous videos. Now, all of this data was recorded using the Radeon RX 6800 in a range of games at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. In a way, this is an extension of the data you might have seen in our day one CPU reviews. Take the Ryzen 5 5600X review, for example. In that review, the intention was to compare CPU gaming performance, and therefore we focused on CPU limited testing by using a GeForce RTX 3090 at 1080p. This hardware configuration is ideal for showing which CPUs are truly faster for gaming, at least in the current range of games we have to test with, though it is also generally a pretty good indicator of performance for the next few years or so. That said, it can be a little bit misleading if you're using the data as sort of a buying guide, especially when comparing CPUs in totally different price ranges. For example, if we take the 11 game average data from the 5600X review, which was recorded at 1080p using an RTX 3090, and that testing focused almost entirely on CPU intensive titles, we see that on average, the 10900K is 29% faster than the R5 3600, and that's quite a massive difference. However, if we use a slightly slower GPU, like the Radeon RX 6800, which is still a mighty fast product, I should add, and include many more games, quite a few of which aren't super CPU intensive, we find that at 1080p, the 10900K is just 9% faster than the R5 3600. Moreover, if we test at a more realistic resolution for most gamers, so 1440p, we find that the margin shrinks to just 4%. So while the Core i9-10900K is an awesome gaming processor, in reality, for most gamers, it's not that much more awesome than something like the Ryzen 5 3600, as you're almost always going to be GPU limited. Of course, it does depend on the game and even then the game quality settings, but we did see very little difference between the two in most of the titles tested. Titles such as Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Cyberpunk 2077, Dirt 5, Doom Eternal, F1 2020, Gears 5, Horizon Zero Dawn, Resident Evil 3, and many, many more. That said, the Core i9 processor was 30% faster in Death Stranding, though the 6-core Zen 2 processor was still good for over 100 FPS at all times. Point is, we're yet to find a game that completely tanks on a modern 6-core, 12-thread processor. That being the case, how much do you actually need to spend on a 6-core processor to receive an optimal gaming experience? We've already seen how much faster the Ryzen 5 5600X is than the 3600 in my day one review. It was 24% faster on average at 1080p using the RTX 3090. But what I want to know is how much difference is there with a more reasonable GPU at a more realistic resolution? Well, today we're going to find out. But before we do... Today's video sponsor is Be Quiet and their brand new Silent Base 802. This latest offering in the Silent Base series is really two cases in one thanks to the interchangeable top and front panels. These allow the user to configure the case for either minimum volume or high airflow, though in either configuration it offers whisper quiet operation. Additionally, pre-installed in the front are two Pure Wings 2 140mm fans, and on the side you get a tempered glass panel. There's also a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C connector on the I.O. panel along with a fan controller. So, for more information, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so we're going to look at performance in 16 games at 1080p, 1440p and 4K using the Radeon RX 6800 and all systems will be configured with 32GB of DDR4-3200CL14 memory. So, with that in mind, let's jump into the benchmark graphs. Okay, so starting with Godfall, we see that the 5600X is 17% faster than the 3600 at 1080p, and only slightly faster than the 10400F, while it trailed the 10900K by an insignificant margin, at least when looking at the average frame rate. It was 9% slower when comparing the 1% low performance. However, once we increase the resolution to 1440p, there's really no difference in performance between the 5600X and the Intel processors. The 5600X is still 12% faster than the 3600, which is a reasonable performance margin, though for many of you, I'm sure it will be hard to justify the 50% price increase. Then, as expected at 4K, we're entirely GPU bound, so any of these CPUs will deliver the same gaming experience under these conditions. 
Next up, we have Watch Dogs Legion, and this isn't a particularly CPU-intensive game. And here we're seeing that even at 1080p, the 3950X, 5600X, and 10900K are all able to get the most out of the RX 6800. The 5600X was 8% faster than the 3600 and 10400F, so a reasonable performance uplift there. Though by the time we hit the 1440p resolution, the margins are neutralized, and of course the same is also seen at 4K. Here we're seeing that Dirt 5, like most car racing games, really isn't that CPU intensive, and even at 1080p we're seeing very little difference between the tested processors. The 5600X was just 6% faster than the 3600, and that meant it matched the 10900K. At 1440p and above, we're looking at identical frame rates across the board. Assassin's Creed Valhalla saw very similar performance across all tested CPUs. The 1% low performance was slightly lower with the 10400F, while the 5600X basically matched the 10900K. Shadow of the Tomb Raider still remains to this day as one of the most CPU intensive titles we have to test with, and here we're looking at a 23% increase in 1% low performance from the 3600 to the 5600X. In other words, the 5600X again matched the 10900K, making it a bit punchier than the other 6 core processors in this title. Though it is well worth noting that those margins evaporate entirely at 1440p, so those of you playing this game at 1440p with an RX 6800 will see little to no performance increase when upgrading your CPU from something like the 3600 to the 5600X, or really any Zen 3 processor for that matter. Upon release, Cyberpunk 2077 was extremely CPU demanding and came close to maxing out processors such as the Ryzen 5 3600. However, several game optimization patches later, and it now runs very comfortably on the 6 core Zen 2 processor, along with the Intel Core i5 10400F. In fact, the 5600X and 10400F delivered the same level of performance, which is essentially the same level of performance you'll see from something like the Core i9 10900K. The 5600X is seen basically matching the 10900K in Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, pushing at 453 FPS at 1080p making it a fraction faster than the 3950X and 7% faster than the 3600. Though, once again, by the time we reach 1440p, there's nothing between any of the processors tested. We're talking about a 2% variation in the results. Wolfenstein Youngblood isn't terribly CPU demanding, though we do see the 10400F drop off a little bit. This is likely a result of the 4.3 GHz frequency cap. The 5600X did nudge ahead of the 10900K by a 2% margin, though that's an insignificant difference, and really, so is the 9% margin it beat the 3600 by. We're talking about 309 FPS versus 337 FPS. Like Dirt 5, F1 2020 also isn't very CPU intensive, and will play just fine using a decent quad core, for example. Therefore, the 3600, 10400F, and 5600X had no trouble delivering highly playable performance, pushing the RX 6800 to over 200 FPS at 1080p. Moving on to Horizon Zero Dawn, and there's really not much to see here either. The 5600X was just 5% faster than the 3600 at 1080p, and 3% slower than the 10900K. The 5600X did remain 3% slower than the 10900K at 1440p, but 7% faster than 3600. Though we are only talking about the difference between 106 FPS and 113 FPS. Hard to say if you'll really be able to notice that difference, especially given the almost identical 1% low performance. Red Dead Redemption 2 is a game most considered to be reasonably CPU intensive, but providing you have a relatively modern 6 core 12 thread processor, you'll do just fine, even with a high end GPU such as the RX 6800. For example, at 1080p we're seeing the 5600X actually nudged ahead of the 10900K, though we are talking about just a few frames here, and that meant it was up to 11% faster than the R5 3600, but again the Zen 2 processor did provide very smooth gameplay. Then once we hit the 1440p resolution, we're looking at similar performance for all 5 tested configurations. Yet another game that isn't very demanding on the CPU, providing you have something relatively modern, is Resident Evil 3. Again, not too much point talking about these results other than to say that all five tested configurations delivered similar numbers at all three resolutions. And Doom Eternal also played at crazy high frame rates with any modern Ryzen or core processor. For example, the R5 3600 was good for 333 FPS at 1080p, while the R5 5600X pushed out 363 FPS, nudging it just ahead of the 10900K.
Now, here's a game that can utilize more than six cores, though that isn't to say it requires more than six cores, as demonstrated by the 5600X, which is actually able to beat the 10900K, though I should probably say it matched the 10900K, given we're only talking about an additional two to three FPS at well over 150 FPS. This game is a perfect example of why core count isn't everything. Despite the fact that this game will scale right up to 12 cores, this only becomes a benefit if the cores are somewhat slow. In the case of the 5600X, which has six very fast cores, it's able to beat its predecessor, the 3600, by a whopping 32% margin at 1080p. It's also able to match the 10900K, despite packing 40% fewer cores. All this becomes somewhat redundant though at 1440p, as here we start to become primarily GPU bound. This time the 5600X is just 5% faster than 3600 when comparing the average frame rate, though it is 12% faster to 41% low performance. The NPC Heavy Hitman 2 is another game that can benefit from having more than 6 cores available when comparing CPUs of the same series. Take the 3600 and 3950X for example, where the 16 core part is 27% faster. However, once again, if we supercharge the cores, like what AMD's done with the 5600X, then 6 core parts can be just as fast as 16 core models of the previous generation, slightly faster even as seen here. Having said all of that, the 5600X was still 7% slow on the 10900K at 1080p, though that margin is reduced to nothing at 1440p, and now the 6 core Zen 3 part is just 9% faster than the Zen 2 version. Finally we have War Thunder, and this is another game that really isn't that demanding on the CPU. I feel like I've said that a lot, but to be honest, most games aren't super CPU intensive, at least when using you know, a modern 6 core 12 thread processor such as the 10400F or Ryzen 5 3600. And the 10400F for example, that's seen trailing other processors by a small margin, and this is likely down to the smaller L3 cache capacity, and of course the lower core clock frequencies. The three Ryzen processors all delivered the same level of performance, performance that is comparable to the Core i9-10900K. I've got to admit, for the most part, the results were kind of boring. The 5600X is typically on par with the other processors tested at 1440p, while it generally matched or came out just behind the 10900K at 1080p. That said, let's move on to check out the 16 game average data. With more games than what was featured in our day one review of the Ryzen 5 5600X, and quite a few of those games not being the most CPU demanding, which is again true for most video games, the 5600X is able to roughly match the 10900K at all three tested resolutions. It's also only slightly faster than the Ryzen 9 3950X, and at 1080p just 12% faster than the Ryzen 5 3600, though that margin shrinks to just 4% at 1440p, and then virtually nothing at 4K. So there you have it. While not the most exciting data set you're likely to ever come across, it does highlight a few things. Firstly, for the most part, six cores with 12 threads is really all you need when purely gaming. If you're streaming or perhaps doing something extra with your PC, then the upgrade to eight, 12 or more cores might be called for, but typically when just gaming, all you need is six cores. So if you happen to have upgraded from a Ryzen 5 3600 to a 5600X and you're not really seeing an improvement in games, which I have seen quite a few people report to us, this would be the reason why. You are primarily GPU bound when gaming. There will be some instances where the newer Zen 3 processor will help you out, but it's a lot like what we saw when comparing Zen 2 to the 9th and 10th gen core series. Yes, they are technically faster when you lower the resolution and use a really fast GPU, but then under more realistic, more typical gaming conditions, it's hard to spot a difference and often you just can't. We are also gaming with a Radeon RX 6800 here, so by no means a slow GPU. And even at 1080p, the margins between the Ryzen 5 3600 and Core i9 10900K were small, while virtually nothing separated the newer 5600X and Core i9 processor. Essentially, there's absolutely no reason to go beyond eight cores for gaming. It's really rather pointless to do so. Again, unless you're doing something extra like streaming, for example. This is why Tim and myself have often advocated for gamers to save as much money as possible on their CPU, either saving that money for a future upgrade or investing it in a better GPU. Take the Ryzen 5 5600X versus Ryzen 7 5800X comparison for example. The 8 core model costs $150 US more, so a 50% premium for 33% more cores. 
Obviously, that's not a great value deal just on the face of it, but worse still, the biggest margin we were able to find in any game was 8% in Death Stranding at 1080p with an RTX 3090. Just 8%. So, in my opinion, it's just not worth spending the extra money when just gaming. $150 US towards a future upgrade will no doubt net you significantly more performance in just a few years' time. Or you could invest that money on the GPU front, and that could jump you up from something like the upcoming RTX 3060 to an RTX 3070. An upgrade that's likely to net you around 30% more performance right now in all of your favorite games. Having said all of that, we'd advocate you save the $100 by skipping the 5600X in favor of something like the Core i5-10400F or Ryzen 5 3600, as both really will deliver a similar gaming experience even with an RTX 3070 or RX 6800. Moreover, under realistic gaming conditions, the 5600X won't be anywhere near 50% faster, so it is hard to recommend you cough up the extra dough for what's likely going to be a very small performance improvement. Unfortunately, right now, we just don't have a great value mid-range desktop processor for gamers, like what we saw from the Ryzen 5 3600 roughly this time last year, and I guess that's why I haven't been nearly as excited about AMD Zen 3 series as I was with Zen 2. Unless you want to spend big on something like a Ryzen 9 5900X or 5950X, Zen 3 really has little to offer you right now, and with AMD unable to produce an Onyx variance anytime soon due to the 7 nanometer supply issues, I do not see this situation changing anytime soon. It's very disappointing there, but I think that's where I will end this video. So if you enjoyed it, you know what to do. You can also subscribe for more content. And if you'd like to become part of the Harbour and Box community, you can join us over on Floatplane or Patreon. That'll get you access to stuff like our exclusive Discord chat, monthly live streams with two of myself, Q and A's, behind the scenes videos, a lot of cool stuff there. So if you're interested, feel free to check it out via the links in the video description. But if not, perfectly fine. And I would like to just thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again soon.